All right, let's look at fire. So these are renders that I've made. They look pretty cool. And by the way, these are looping. And I will show you a sneak peek at a new full tutorial that we're going to be doing soon. Isn't that beautiful? I was very happy with this one. It feels has the right feel to it. So fire, fire is cool. And let's take a look at how some of these fires were done. So that's, I believe, one of the fires that we saw in the render. Let's actually do a quick render of this fire. Let's see, it's this guy here. And obviously we are, again, providing the hip files. So just so you know, these are the big fires, medium fires. Um, yeah, medium, small to high, and then small fires. That's how they're structured. And if we go to the rendering section, we have a little rendering. Let's see if I can pick a better frame. Ooh, look at those flicks. Look at that. Let's go a bit closer. Ooh. I like looking at some good fire. And these are quite high res. I think they are, they are around 100 million voxels. And you do need to go quite high res when you are rendering fire like this. Oof, I'm going to go even closer. Look at that. I like I like this a lot. Like these, how it looks, it feels like real fire. Uh, the ren so yeah, about the rendering, it's nothing sim, it's nothing simple. Also, look at those flicks. That's where it's at when you're doing fire. You need those flicks. Look at them. Look at them flicks. So we have a fire and to render this, you just create a shader that has this curve. That's pretty much it. And then you need to play with the source range. So if I make this smaller, you can see we're going to get higher flicks of flame and that's maybe that's going to work for you. It's completely fine, but you can also erode it in a bit more. So it depends on what you need. I feel like four was working good. That's pretty much it. That's the secret to fire rendering to get those nice uh, dark patches. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you will get this. Nobody wants that. And then you're going to play around and you're going to be like, oh, why is this not looking how it should? And then actually you're going to get, let's see, you're going to get this. And this looks like smoke and this, it feels like fire, but it's not fire. And then everybody's confused and you don't want that. You don't want people being confused. So just do it the right way. There we go. That's how fire looks. All right, enough about fire rendering. Let's go into one of these projects. I think this one was the, the one I wanted to show. All of them have the same base, so if, I'm going to talk about this one, but just remember they have all the same base and maybe I was just tweaking some of the settings. But we are doing pretty much similar things that uh, we've been already covering, scattering points, transforming this to the center. That's all this is doing, adding some noise that I'm not even using. So uh, I would use it like this. I would just delete the black patches not using it at all. If you want to, you can create a density field, set it to one, create a P scale field, create a attribute noise for density, and then another one for density and merge them, create a point velocity. We'll give you these velocities. So that will flick your fire in the beginning. Quite important. And then you rasterize everything. So it looks like this. The reason we combine noises is to get a layered effect. And so one patches are bigger, some are smaller, and this will give you a natural uh, raising and lowering of the flame. Now, you may be wondering, well, I only have density here, of course. Uh, that's because I'm renaming density to temperature and then merging it together. So we have density V and temperature, right? It's all, this should all be familiar. We went through it in the previous lessons. 
this is a good way to visualize your velocity. I'm not sure we covered this. Uh, we also have an Axiom velocity trail that is going to do the same thing. Oops. One, two, put this to V. It's going to be the same thing, or at least very similar. So if you need to visualize your trails, you don't have to do this setup anymore every time. You can just use the Voxel, uh, the Axiom Velocity Trail. Once you have that, I mean, it's pretty much it. All we are doing is not even using combustion. You don't need combustion for fire. You can use it if you, you can see here, you can bring in your fuel. And once you have fuel and temperature, you can use combustion to add even more uh, density, temperature or pressure. You don't need it. You can just use temperature and density. And this is what we're getting here. And you can see we're not seeing a lot at all. We are just seeing some smoke and we don't even need smoke. We only need the temperature. And once you visualize your temperature with this fire, you can see I'm using similar values that I was using on that shader. Uh, once you visualize that, this is the pretty much the fire that you get. Let me disable the smoke. There we go. So that's pretty cool. The reason we don't need smoke, we need uh, we need a bit of smoke in this example just to activate everything. Um, but we don't need a lot of smoke. Like it would be, it wouldn't be worth simulating all of the smoke, like go making the smoke go up too high. So what I do in this example, yeah, the dissipation is quite high. You can even put this to one, and it's still gonna be fine. So it's gonna be dissipating a lot of smoke, like almost to its maximum, and it will only keep the smoke where the temperature is. So if you look at our fire, this is what we're going to be getting. Uh, the smoke will control a bit your flicks of flame. So sometimes just having a bit less dissipation is going to be fine. But you don't want to emit a lot of smoke because that's going to slow down the simulation. And then the way you control the, the height of your fire is by this cooling rate of the temperature. So if you cool it down a lot, you can see we're not getting almost anything. Let's cool it down less, so we're going to get a smaller fire. And maybe if we don't dissipate the smoke so much, we might get some more of those flicks of flame. But it's pretty much controlled by this, so if we go back the fire is a bit bigger all right but yeah let's go to back to what we had so it's important to note uh, the time scale is set to 2.7 for fire in this case uh, and that will give you that fast motion like that if you don't do that everything will be slow and sluggish and then you will try to combat and make things faster with adding more velocity, which is not going to work properly. So it, it is a part of it, but you need this to be, let's set it to three. And that's how you get everything rising faster. You get all of your disturbances working and so on. And you can see, I also set the sub steps to three. If you set it to one, uh, firstly, the, all the disturbances are going to be calculated differently. So that's not going to work. But even if we put everything away, sometimes with fire, because it's moving so fast, uh, we're going to get some of this stretching happening. You can see like this sub-stepping. And the simulation is not any faster at all. So increasing the sub-steps in a lot of cases will not slow down your simulation. So if you put this to three, now you see we get rid of the sub-stepping. The simulation speed is pretty much the same. Now we're getting more of the 
or the CG looking flames. So we then can apply the turbulence and disturbance. I think I had these on before. And now we're going to get the nice flame that we had before. All right, cool. So like I said, tried the other examples. They're all pretty good. This one, I added some notes. This one is a bit slower just because it's like around 100 million voxels. Same for this one. They're a bit slower, but the shapes are looking pretty cool. I like how this shape was breaking here. So sometimes it was connecting, sometimes it wasn't, and then sometimes it was kind of combining. Maybe we can preview this one. Yeah, they're a bit slow to preview, so sorry about that. But you can see sometimes they share this space in between and it gives it a really nice and organic value. Also this one here on the side looks pretty decent. Oops. Yeah, that, that flick was pretty cool. So we have this, so these are the big flames, and then we have the super tiny flames, which are also important. Where is the tiny flame? I know I had a tiny flame somewhere. So these are smaller flames, uh, but higher. So this guy, so this one is a lot faster, but the resolution is quite lower. And then we have the really small flames. Let's preview these. I thought they were uh, quite cute. Now they're slower because the resolution again is quite high on them, but it kind of has to be, otherwise you don't get the realistic movement and look. And it's really, it's difficult to get these uh, small flames to look correct. Look, pretty cool. At least I think they're pretty, 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 pretty cute. All right, so that's pretty much it about fire. The only last thing I wanted to cover is this fire without smoke. And we covered this already, but just to reiterate it here, I'm only sourcing in temperature and fuel. Let's enable the solver. And we're not going to be outputting any smoke. We're only outputting uh, temperature and velocity in this case. We don't even need velocity. We do need it to, uh, for motion vectors, uh, sorry, for motion blur, but for nothing else in this case. So you can see we are only simming the temperature without any density. And to achieve that, let's see, I even in this case, I no, I'm not using combustion here either. So you probably remember, you have to go under the mask field, set this to off, go under settings, sparse, temperature plus density, and you will only get temperature and you don't need to sim any smoke in this case. I found that it's not much faster, so you can use either one or the other workflow. All right. Have fun with the presets and let's go to the next lesson.